They whispered together. <laughs> and then they all three laughed. <laughs> Such a silvery, musical laugh. But as hard as though the sound never could have come through the softness of human lips. It was like the intolerable, tingling sweetness of water glasses when played on by a cunning hand. The fair girl shook her head coquettishly, and the other two urged her on. <sighs> you are first, and we shall follow. Yours is the right to be king. He is young and strong. There are kisses for us all. Oh. Oh. Mm. I lay quiet, looking out under my eyelashes in an agony of delightful anticipation. The fair girl advanced and bent over me till I could feel the movement of her breath upon me. Sweet it was in one sense, honey sweet, and sent the same tingling through the nerves as her voice, but with a bitter underlying the sweet, a bitter offensiveness as one smells in blood. I was afraid to raise my eyelids, but I looked out and saw perfectly under the lashes. The girl went on her knees and bent over me, simply gloating. There was a deliberate voluptuousness which was both thrilling and repulsive. And as she arched her neck, she actually licked her lips like an animal, till I could see in the moonlight the moisture shining on the scarlet lips and on the red tongue as it lapped the white, sharp teeth. <laughs> lower and lower went her head as the lips went below the range of my mouth and chin, and seemed about to fasten on my throat. And I could hear the churning sound of her tongue as it licked the teeth and lips. on my neck, and the skin of my throat began to tingle as one's flesh does when the hand that is to tickle it approaches nearer, nearer. I could feel the soft, shivering touch of the lips on the super-sensitive skin of my throat, and the hard dents of two sharp teeth, just <laughs> touching and pausing there. I closed my eyes in a languorous ecstasy and waited, waited with beating heart. <sighs>